Blessed be the Holy Trinity, and blessed be the church that bears that holy name. Good evening. Welcome in the name of the Lord. Tonight's gospel finds us in the wilderness with Jesus, where in a series of tests, the devil tempts Jesus to be less than who he truly is, the very Son of God. As he deflects the tempter's appeals, we see in Jesus the champion who comes to our aid during our times of trouble. Our prelude prepares us for our journey to meet Jesus in the wilderness.
Please turn with me to the order for confession and forgiveness. Rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so, so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and receives and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Our gathering song is ELW 319, O Lord, throughout these 40 days.
Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us. And the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word. And when we fall, raise us up again and restore us through your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis, chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, and chapter 3, 1 through 7. A reading from Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may eat freely eat of every tree of the garden, but for the tree of the knowledge of, knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat it, eat it, you shall die. Now the spirit was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the spirit serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was, a delight, it was delightful to the eyes, and that the tree was, in, was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. We'll read responsibly Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sins are put away. Happy, Happy are, are they, they to whom, whom the Lord imputes no, no guilt and, and in, in their spirit, spirit there is being no guile. guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For my hand, hand was, was heavy, heavy upon, upon me day and night. night. My, my moisture, moisture was dried up, up as in the heat, heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sins. Therefore, Therefore all, all the faithful, faithful will make their prayers, prayers to you in time, time of trouble. trouble. When, when the, the great, great waters, waters overflow, overflow, they, they shall, shall not, not reach, reach them. them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I, I will instruct you and teach you, teach you in, the in the way, way that, that you should go. go. I, will I will guide, guide you, you with my eyes. eyes. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bridle and bit, or else they will not stay near you. Great, Great are the, the tribulations, tribulations of the wicked, but, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Lord. Be glad, your righteousness, and, the rejo and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 19. Just as in sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law. But sin is now reckoned when there is no, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who is a type of one 
who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many die through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift of the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound it for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sins. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following from many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death, exercise dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through that one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, may the Lord grant us to walk in the way of the only Son, now and always. Amen. Sometimes we get blue. Sometimes we fall into a funk and get down on ourselves. Sometimes the world is too much with us and we feel like we can't do anything right. Sometimes the days just drag on and on, and no matter how hard we hustle and bustle, we can never seem to catch up. Sometimes it's just a bad day, a blue Monday, we might say. Sometimes we can write it off as only a bad week. And sometimes those weeks can run to months, and the months to a year or more. And for people under that kind of black cloud, there is help. 
Senator John Fetterman recently checked himself into Walter Reed Medical Center for depression. As you all know, the senator suffered a stroke last year, and depression following that kind of medical crisis is not uncommon. When my wife had a major stroke in 1998, we were both thrown into an emotional hole. Hers much deeper than mine. Some people say Fetterman should have dropped out of the Senate race, but, you know, you tell yourself, I've got this. I can handle this. I know what I'm doing. Until you don't. I know we all wish the senator the best and pray for his recovery. In my pastoral experience, I am, however, aware of many depressed people who do not get help. They discount, deny, or dismiss their feelings so that even when loved ones ask, what's wrong? They answer, I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. They don't want people thinking that they're crazy. I'm not going to any shrink, they say. They convince themselves that they can bootstrap themselves out of their depression. You know, just gut it out and get over it. And they come to church and the first thing we ask them to do is confess their faults and failings and generally what a mess they've made out of their lives. Not so many years ago, my daughter questioned me on the wisdom of starting every service with confession and forgiveness. She argued that with so many people already feeling so bad about themselves, why do we then hit them over the head with their sinfulness? I calmly explained, well, Miss Smarty Pants, why don't we make you the queen of the church and you can fix everything? No, I, I didn't say that. I might have thought it. <laughs> I didn't say it. Actually, as often happens in conversations with my daughter, I got to think. When in service, I call people to confession. Am I just rubbing salt in open wounds, at least for some people? In the old, and by old I mean 1958, not that old, service book and hymnal, we confess, quote, that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and then went on to further confess to God, we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Yipes. How's that good for anyone's health, mental or otherwise? Despite the fact that in many congregations, confession and, confi uh, confession and forgiveness is a kind of default liturgical choice, there is no rule, rubric, or law that every Lutheran service has to begin with confession and forgiveness. I'm sure you noticed that over the Sundays of the Epiphany season, we opted for Thanksgiving for baptism. Because one, Epiphany is a season to rejoice in the light and glory of Christ. And two, sometimes it's just a good idea to give confession and forgiveness a rest. But not in the season of Lent. Confession is good for the soul, so goes the old saying. And the gospel for this first Sunday in Lent goes a long way toward explaining why. According to Matthew, and likewise Mark and Luke, Jesus was tempted, really genuinely tempted, as in on the brink, sorely tried, capable of falling even. Although God from God, light from light, true God of true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father through whom all things were made, even Jesus was tempted as you and I are tempted because Jesus was human as you and I are human. 
You can say many, 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 many things about what it means to be human, but indisputably, to be human is to be vulnerable. Despite the many ways we try to wrap ourselves in armor, physically, emotionally, psychologically, there are always chinks in that armor. Things can and do get to us. And as the temptation of Jesus shows, there are stresses that can make us more vulnerable, more vulnerable than we might otherwise be. When we're starving to death, we're capable of doing anything to secure food for ourselves or for our families. When poverty is crushing the life out of us, the lure of wealth tempts us to surrender our deepest values for a quick buck. When we've lost control of our lives and other people are pulling our strings, what won't we do for just a little power? To be vulnerable is not to be sinful or unclean. To be vulnerable is not the same as being weak or unworthy. I think our vulnerabilities actually make it possible for us to love and be loved. But the tempter, our adversary, outright I'll say it, the devil exploits those vulnerabilities, twisting our capacity for love into fear and loathing that we then wield like a blunt instrument against ourselves and others. Some people might be surprised to hear an enlightened, liberally educated ELCA pastor mention the devil. I'm not superstitious. I'm not invoking the boogeyman. I can personally attest to the efficacy of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. But there's more than just biochemistry at work. When good men and good women get so turned around that they become convinced that their life is not worth living. So let us confess our vulnerabilities before God our Father in the name of Jesus. Let's admit to God and to one another and we can be tempted in all sorts of ways, great and small. Because when we're blind to our vulnerabilities, we are never more dangerous to ourselves and others. When we assume that we are beyond temptation, when we reckon ourselves above mere mortals, superior, entirely whole, totally healthy and invulnerable, then it is that, in the words of First Peter, our adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Thank God for Jesus, the lion slayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the hymn of the day.
profess the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You alone are God. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to the bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the Ministry of Administration, especially our Northeastern Pennsylvania Senate. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in the fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would prevail all of the regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love, especially those displaced by the recent earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially those who serve as ushers, assisting ministers and acolytes, altar guild workers and coffee, host, uh, coffee hour hosts. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting your steadfast love and your promise to renew our whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace as you feel comfortable. Peace be with you.
provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with the words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. merciful guide together with rivers and seas wells and springs we bless and magnify you you led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock we praise you for Christ our rock and our water who joined us in our desert pouring out his life for the world in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Thanks be to God. Shed 
body of Christ given for you. The blood, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Good, that's good. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. For your Lenten reflection and renewal, uh, we are offering special study and worship opportunities this Wednesday, and for the remaining Wednesdays in March, we'll be meeting in the St. Paul Social Room for a study of the Apostle Paul. The class will begin about at 2 and wind up between 3.15 and 3.30. Not too long. Okay. On the Wednesday evenings of Lent, we'll gather for Holden Evening Prayer at 7 p.m. beginning here at St. Peter's through March 15th before moving on to St. John's Windish. David Coleman has an update on recent council work. Good evening. So just want to give you some updates from the February 21st, 2023 Joint Council highlights. So first item, the Joint Council voted on the following recommendations. They discussed, voted, and passed the building location of worship schedule for the balance of the year due to the sale of the properties as of May 3rd, 2023, after the sale the only building we will be able to use is the Light of Christ campus. 
we are planning celebration events for all three buildings and communities of faith. There's discussed, voted, and passed a celebration event starting in June as Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church, worshiping at the Light of Christ building. We've discussed, voted, and passed to authorize uh, Kenda Riley working with Nancy Co uh, Casas to make decisions regarding distribution, donations, and disposal of minor non-worship religious items or religious items. Uh, we discussed, voted, and passed to, dis to distribute the synod's reflection questions for congregations in tr transition. These will be mailed out and distributed to all members of their community of faith with return self-addressed stamped envelopes. This is the first step in starting our new pastor call process. And due to the passing of the merger and filing of the state reg registry with Pennsylvania, Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church Council is now governing board with the uh, retroactive date of the vote from February 5th, 2023. The individual councils of the three churches are still, still exist to implement the transition into Blessed Trinity. So Blessed Trinity's, uh, uh, Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church council members are as follows. Kenda Riley is serving as president. Ken Ramalli is serving as vice president. Michelle Lloyd is serving as secretary. And Joseph Blyer is serving as treasurer. Joe Bolotsky. 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 Uh, Sandy Butch. Lou Dravitz. Bonnie Harper. Carol Henn. Jeff Nielsen. Maria Skrillick. Skrillick and Paul Tabob and then Pastor Mike. Those are members of the Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church Council. Thank you. Thank you, David. Over the season of Lent, we will be receiving food donations to help build up a food pantry at Lincoln Elementary. That's the uh, nature of this little uh, demonstration over there. Thank you for that. Nice, nicely done. Uh, and uh, your gifts will assist families facing food insecurity. There's a, a little display in the back of the church as well with suggested items to bring in uh, for that food pantry. Uh, as the sale of our buildings approaches, as David indicated, May 3rd being the day we have to be out of both St. Peter's and St. John's, uh, we've altered our Sunday worship schedule so that we will be worshiping at, here at St. Peter's through March 19th before switching to St. John's on March 26th. We'll keep you posted through the till we meet again and through the email blasts we send out uh, every week. Okay, I don't want to uh, torture you with too much, too, many, too much information right now. We're going to keep you posted, okay? All right. Please rise for the blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this, your Lenten journey. Amen. Ascending song is 320, the glory of these 40 days.
in peace, serve in love. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God.